done so many characters. In fact, I mean, you did two episodes in uh, the classic um, Little House. Little House. Yeah. You know, Little House on the Prairie. What? The magic box, and I remember, I remember. Music, the music box. Yeah. There's Allison and I. Can you see that? It's gorgeous. Yeah. Isn't that cute? That's, uh, that's uh, Allison and I. Um, yeah, the music box, that was, that was a great one because I was being bullied in that one. I was, uh, I was a stutterer, which yeah. is really, um, is Allison right there? Huh? Who is that? Oh my God! <laughs> How are you? I'm great. How are you? Oh my God! I, I, and I tuned in. I'm like coming into the room and she's saying, and that was the one where I played a stutterer, which is really hard. And I'm just like, like say it again faster. I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm just, yes. Hi. So Did you enjoy your birthday present? Well, my birthday thing, uh -huh. yeah, it was so insane. So like on the 12th, I had a show. So I did the show and then for the like curtain call, but in the living room on my online show. So it was just me and Bob and the cats. And then I had cake and then we like ordered pizza. And then I'd like Emery said, okay, here's your video. I asked some people to say happy birthday, but like, then they all said yes. And then they called all their friends and they all said yes. And then, and so it's like two and a half hours long. So manatees, did you know that I had a thing about manatees? I had no idea. I because I made a movie in Florida when I was ten. I did throw out the anchor. Like, okay, it wasn't a good movie, but I made a movie in Florida when I was ten, and we were on the St. John's River, which is full of manatees and and alligators and other stuff and armadillos in the woods and possums and things. And there were bloop, 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 manatees, and and I was like ten, so I was reading about animals that were and manatees were having a terrible time because too many people were riding their propeller boats on the St. John's River and they were killing them and apparently they cut back on it and it like it worked like the manatees kind of came back because they were like really really endangered um they're and still I, really uh, they're still having a bad time yeah. I uh, love them because they're like they're like freshwater walruses Yes. <laughs> they're not normal you're like why are you in a river you are like a whale or a walrus why are you in a river what is happening and they're so <laughs> gentle and they're so beautiful wow it's so good to see you you look amazing oh happy God. birthday I, I, she, she, happy so, birthday yes, I, I have my reading glasses i was just at the eye doctor this morning i'm going to be getting slightly more powerful reading glasses. ah uh, yes it's that time it's that time well, you look gorgeous oh. Uh, uh, now we were talking about that show we, did you is that where the two of you met on that yeah. show was that yeah yeah because we get now we kept crossing paths i mean later there was that wackadoo thing in atlanta yes yes it was like it was, you, you, um, heidi. you were heidi so we were all in, in atlanta right i think it was, yeah. i would think that was the heidi time yeah that was a promo yeah. for heidi and nbc that was heidi and remember the god that, boy Little Sweet. Abner, because the they were doing a musical, sort of like they do these musicals live now on the, the uh -huh. NBC did Little Abner and Stephen Burns and all these people were all in their Little Abner clothes most of the time at the event. It was very weird. And um, oh, we went, I yes, it was bananas. We had all these actors dressed up in their Little Abner gear, really embarrassed having to walk around the hallways of this expensive hotel barefoot. And <laughs> It was nuts. And then we went to this huge dinner and it was all really crazy. So yeah, we hung out at that. That was just banana beds. But yeah, we I never went to a disco. You remember going to a we disco? Did. We were all underage and they served all this booze at the table and we were children yes. and nobody was checking. So we we're like, no. we were idiot kids and we proceeded to drink everything at the table and then they said oh right. we're going to the disco it's 21 and over. What are you guys? 12? Get in the car. And there we were at the disco. <laughs> yeah. I was like oh, 2015, maybe. Yeah. At the disco. Oh, I was like 12 or 13 at the yeah, time. Yeah, really 13. I was like 15 and I went dancing with Stephen Burns in this disco that was absolutely not supposed to be for children. And yeah, you were like freaking 12. And, um, and people it was staring at us. Yeah, I remember mm -hmm. that. Wow. And yes, no, there was there was all sorts of like going to underage things and, and consumption of alcohol and debauchery in Atlanta. And we were because child actors, and this is this is what goes on because yeah. there you go. 
Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, it was met, but we met. Yeah. We met during the stuttering thing. Yes, yes. And I was very cruel to you. <laughs> I started cracking myself up even thinking about it. It was so much fun. I was watching a clip from that last night, and I was going, "Oh!" And when your father says, "Get in your room," or I'm going to, you know, mm -hmm. where do you think you're going? To school. I'll, I'll be late. Today you've got a lesson to learn right here at home. You go to your room. Now! And that scene between the two of you. But you, you were, were and you, were so, you were so convincing. I mean, I still, to this day, people go, oh, that poor little girl really stuttered. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> like, she was on hotel. Didn't you see her? She's come on, Ted, like a whole life. What we're talking about. Um, but yeah, yeah, people people bought it. And you're and then you're like, I'm saying all these, and you start crying. And it was hard. It was hard to stand there and go, I can't hear you say it faster when you're like sobbing hysterically in my face. I was like, okay, this is kind of awful. <laughs> it was awesome. I had such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was wonderful. I got to, to you know, I, I love playing the victim. It's I, I actually refer to that episode as the episode where even I hate me. Oh, oh <laughs> that oh. bad. Yeah. Because I watch it and go, that's that's pretty terrible. <laughs> it, it actually, it's like it's really creepy. It's really creepy. It's like that terrible. So yeah. So you it's really got hate, hate mail after that one, right? <laughs> it was like so bad. Oh my god. And it wouldn't and it wouldn't work if you hadn't been so vulnerable and sweet and so convincing as a stutterer and stammerer and crying. So it wouldn't it would have been as quite so evil, but it just made it so much worse because you were like so sweet and I'm so obviously. Yeah. But that was the thing. Yeah, I was really out to make you look bad. You did. You made me look bad. Was, and it, was it, was, it was so bonkers because when I was in like first or second grade, I couldn't say the letter S. And I had to stay, I have to stay after school for speech class. Um, and I, I had to go to speech class with the stutterers and the stammerers and a girl who couldn't say um the letter R. And um they taught me to stop th 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 talking like this and to say the letter S. So I yeah, technically had legally a speech impediment, I guess. And then I went and they fixed it and I stopped saying the, th instead of s. And um, I was friends with a girl and for two months, I thought her name was Wanda. And no, it was Rhonda. She but she thought my oh. name was Elephant because I put that. Yeah. I mean, it was it was crazy. And but it was all the kids who stammered and stuttered. So the I since I hung out with all the people who couldn't say S and couldn't say R and stammered, right. the idea of torturing someone who stammered or stuttered, oh, no, 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 yeah, gave me the creeps. Yeah, you did so good though. But with, what was so wonderful was that you and Melissa were so kind. Um, it was my first theatrical job. Really? Before that, I'd only done commercials. Yeah, I'd only done oh, commercials wow. before that. I've done you, plays you were like a fiend. You were in everything. You were like, as I said, like the journeyman actor. You were in all the TV movies. You were like, you know, banging it out. But that we were the first. Yeah. Well, I wasn't stuck on a series, honey. I wasn't stuck on a series. So I, I freelanced. I did all kind of, you know, I was out there doing all kind of stuff. You made me famous because, well, no, actually, well, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how it happened. I know that I did, um, Little House was first. And then right after that, I did an after school special with Melissa Sue Anderson. Right. And then, um, and then I did When Every Day Was the Fourth of July, which was that um, movie that David and I were big, talking big, about big. earlier. And, and were you in that? Once what was it? It was the fourth of July. I just worked. Well, because then you were worked. like a star. Now, it was that that we, were you in Circle of Children that like everybody was in? No. Okay. Uh, what? That was, that was thing Circle of Children. That was the thing with Matt Laberto. That was the weird thing where like no, didn't do that. half my friends were in circle. It's like everyone was in Todd Bridges. It was like everybody was in Circle of Children. I'm like, oh, I was busy. Uh, <laughs> I must have been busy. But, they, but yeah, you did every day with 4th of July. So that was like huge, 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 huge. But yeah, so we were, we were your yeah. like gateway, gateway drug to, to just, television. Yeah, you were like gateway drug. That's right. That's right. You were. It just cal catapulted That's you what? into the next realm. We love, now you said, you said Melissa and I were nice to you, which is good because the first gig, I mean, people were, were horrible and we were nice awesome. to you. Hmm. You were great. I mean, I felt so, and everybody else, 
paled by comparison. Every time I worked on any other show, especially like I did like 14 guest spots or something. Right. And I was all expecting everybody to be like, hi, how are you doing? let's go play. And they were like, no, in school, out, in school, out, in school, out, you know, and work, 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 cry, cry, cry. worked cry. on Little House. They all say this. Everyone says, I worked on Little House and everyone's so friendly. And then I go to work on another show and I'm like, good morning. And they're like, what? Get ready. Leave me alone. I'm working. And like, nobody speaks to anyone and everyone's horrible. And the director's yelling at you. And they're just like, what happened? A Little House. I was like, hi. Breakfast, do anything. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, well, it was the so was really great. We were, we were, show. we were nice. Uh, the woman, the mom of the baby Grace twins, little when when Wendy and Brenda were so cute, little baby Grace, their mom, she go, okay, because they're infants, they started a little house and then they were on for a couple of years. And she went, Well, this is going pretty well. Everyone's really nice to them, no one's abusing them, they're getting the nursery school, it's fine. So she finished and goes, I don't know if they really want to be show business, show business, but let's do it. So she like sent them out for some more stuff and they they got a commercial. They get to the commercial set and she said, It was awful. Nobody cared if they'd eaten, if they'd had a nap. Nobody checked on them. Nobody wanted to know if they'd had lunch. They just kept working them. Everybody was kind of awful. And she said, and as soon as she got out of there, she did the one commercial. She said, well, kids, that's it. We're not doing this anymore. And they were like, eh, that's fine by us. They were like, you know, three. Um, and they just didn't care. And she said, yeah, that's the end of that. She said, no, if everyone ran a set like Little House and all the adults had been nice and, and checking on my kids and being solicitous of their well-being, like on little house she said oh maybe they'd have gone on and done commercials she said literally the next job we got she was just like slack jaw going well this isn't any fun this is terrible why would you want to oh, do yeah. this for your kids <laughs> mm. commercials are a meat factory i swear my first uh commercial in um los angeles because i started doing commercials in miami and then we moved out to la when i was seven my first commercial in Los Angeles was for um, Twinkies with Ann Blythe. Oh. We're on a boat and it's after lunch. We had eaten, like picked out on lunch. We get on this boat and 67 bites out of dried out Twinkies. Oh no. Seven bites out of dried. And at first I didn't know where, you know, I didn't know that you had the spit bucket. So, you know, like after like the fourth bite, I'm like, Ooh, I'm turning That's green. I'm kind of and when you're a kid, who spits out food? You're like eating and spitting out food is disgusting. It's like the Roman yeah. vomitorium or what the hell are you doing? <laughs> who does that? And the director was like, I took this bite out of this Twinkie and my face must have been horrible. It was really dried out. And, and the director comes up to me and says, Katie, you're supposed to like the Twinkie. <laughs> I did a, my one burger commercial. I was like, I guess we won't be doing a lot of fast food commercials with the Caro's restaurant or something. And it was like a marching band, a cute little marching band uniform. I got to carry around a trombone that I do not play. And so we go in the restaurant and then the food, but it's all cold. There's all these burgers and fries and they're ice cold, which is disgusting. And the fries, because I don't know, maybe digital now they can cook them all the way, but in film, they look darker on camera so they're like barely cooked they're like almost raw just kind of pale dead fries and cold and they're like okay, okay. and people are eating and i'm like oh hell no and they're like can you take a bite of the burger and it's just like i don't i don't think i can and they're like okay well eat the fries <laughs> eat the fries so i like eat the fries and the look on my face is horror i'm like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you look like you like them. Yeah, same thing. No, they're supposed to be good. Oh, okay. All the they were so, they were so bad, and and it was terrible because like I think like, Carol's has like good food in real life, but like no, and all the stuff is cold and dead and sitting out for hours and pale and like why why it's, it's, it's horrible 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 and they don't warn you they don't warn you oh by the way it will be so no. cold dead food and you need to fix. they just go here and you're like ah what is that <laughs> it's wow. really good to see you allison it's so good to see you this is awesome i love it you know i'm just sitting here loving it because it's like two old friends getting together yeah yeah, I haven't seen you in in years now. It's been years. Yeah, you moved in the thing in the and yeah, you know and then, then of course the last two years I've kind of been in in this chair. Um, I did. I mean, I've done some we, little reprise. I've gone out and I did some stuff. I went to South Dakota thing, and then I made a movie. I made a movie 
God, in September 2020, I mean, we're all like masked up and like, stand over there. The camera comes and we did the movie. Wait, and, wait. And he's what movie did you do? I, I made a movie called um, Even in Dreams. And it's um, it was shot in Utah, super holes, a lot of Mormons, a lot of, there's two Osmonds, two Osmonds. Oh. Um, there, it's about this young girl and she's trying to sing her sister's songs and keep her memory alive and keep her band together. And it was, it's a sequel to the first one the two sisters were together. And it's a young girl trying to make her way in the music industry and stick to her values, keep her band together. And it's so goody goody and lovely. And then she meets this manager that she's been referred to that's supposed to help her, who turns out to be evil, manipulative, exploitive, oh. awful, awful person. Like, <laughs> like real LA at times, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, when people at the screening, I have people come up to me and say, I've worked in the music industry and that was a little too accurate. I was having flashbacks. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so evil. I'm just completely evil in it. Um, I did that and then it was actually in theaters. What is it? Uh, You're the manager? I was the evil manager. I was an, e Are you an the evil manager? band manager. No, oh, I, played, I, played, I played an evil band manager. And I was completely evil. I was so evil. People were, it's almost like booing and hissing at the screen. And I had people who said, I'm in the music industry. And oh my God, that was too accurate. You're scaring the crap out of me. And um, and then it's it's out on DVD and Blu-ray now. Oh, even good. In and it's like, it's like a young girl, girl power, Hillary Duff. Yes, stick your values, girls, lovely, wholesome, take the kids movie. And I'm just like, satan um so yeah it's really good i did that and then i've been doing my comedy but doing it like online on stage at like pay-per-view with i have all these i keep here we'll just i keep going to amazon and buying these backdrops <laughs> and hanging these things in my living room i have have just my thing now that i've dropped it on the floor okay i have i have a brick wall i have halloween christmas whatever this is outer space because of the birthday blast off um got valentine's is coming up february 12th so I get up and we set up the computer and we have lighting and we have a backdrop and little, so we come up with little themes, things and play music. And then I, uh, Bob runs camera. We log in and then I come out and go, hi everybody. So anyway, hold on. I do stand up and it go, people pay 10 bucks. And, and I'm there. I'm in my living room there in their living room and it's brilliant. We did it when in 2020, I had a show in New York that was of course canceled. So we went, look, hi, I could do it here. And now I'm just <laughs> doing that every month. And then I went to New York in September and I did do shows, Rochester Fringe, a place called Caviar. So it's like, I do some outside, but I do, I've done a couple virtual autograph shows. Oh, wow. I've been reading books. Well, I read the Little House books on Facebook Live. Now I'm reading the Three Faces of Nelly, and, um, oh, cooking. I'm making cooking videos. I have a I have a YouTube channel called Who's Going to Do the Cooking. I love those. Oh, by the way, so by funny. the way, thank you yeah. again for those lemon meringue pies during that first year of the pandemic. You okay, mentally you're in, line, you're in line for another pie because with the birthday, you just had the birthday. <laughs> yes, and I got for my birthday, I got the KitchenAid giant standing mixer. That was my <laughs> birthday present. So it's got the big whip of tea. It's ready to get the whip. So lemon meringue pie. The oh. meringue will be very large with it. Okay. <laughs> I just thought of a good Halloween costume for me. <laughs> a lemon meringue pie. <laughs> So yeah, so that's, I, I, I've been working, working. Sometimes I work in my living room um, and sometimes I, I go someplace and actually do work. But then sometimes I'm just here in the chair just talking like this. Right, right. Hey, Katie. Is Katie yeah. frozen? Or Katie? Oh, Katie, I can hear her. Yes. Her You're frozen, frozen again. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Katie, come back. It's a come back. <laughs> technology. I love it. I don't know. This is going to be a little editing job, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got a giant art, the giant, whatever gallon bowl, artisanal, tilt headed, whatever KitchenAid in, in like 1950s turquoise. Oh, <laughs> I love that. So you're getting another lemon meringue pot because I got the fancy mixer. So I got to do it. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. I well, look forward to it. So I want to uh, know about both. I mean, yeah. what, what would you tell the actors out there right now? who are looking to get into show business and if they are under 18, what would you say? What? If, if, what would you tell 
actors who are or the parents of actors getting a, a getting there would you say hey jump into the business it's fun or you know you gotta be careful She's both good. um i i don't know if anybody else is uh, my my video keeps messing with me so i'm just going to talk as if um, i'm the only one talking <laughs> um i would say uh, if you really 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 want to do the business um do a lot of theater maybe some commercials when you're younger don't try to get into theatricals because um you want to wait it, get some experience but you want to wait until you're um just about past puberty before you um, start working as an actor, if you want to work as an adult, because cancel culture is real for child actors. Oh Just saying, so you might be a successful actor, but you're not going to be a successful adult actor. So give it some time and wait and get some experience. At the same time, it's easier to get in when you're a kid. Mm. So, you know, 13, 14, I would say that's good, because if you can land something and then work through your transition, then you got a ch good chance of staying working as an adult. Um, but uh, if you want your child to grow up normal, if you want to be a normal human, don't be an actor because we're not normal. <laughs> yeah. My first response, I thought like, but my first response was, you want to be in the business, you're very young, you want your parents, you, you want to put your child in bed. My first response, run away. Um, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't put your daughter on the stage. Um, generally, 99% of people who think they want to be actors or be in show business or want to put the kids, I would say, no, just please don't do this. Don't do this. Find something else to do. It's, it's, you will be sorry. It'll be a terrible idea. Now, in the, saying that, the other, that, that tiny 0.1% out there, you may have, you may have that kid who is in your living room, who is not afraid of adults and strangers, who doesn't mind large groups of people, who is not easily frightened and intimidated, who really does seem to be into it, who's watching movies and TV and like getting what they're doing. You're like, what the, who is this child? What is they, are they, they may have it. They may be back and you go, okay, what am I going to do? And they really, really say they want to do it. You may have that person, you know, it's like so the kids are the virtuoso violinist or whatever. So, okay. I always say, start where you are. Don't just jump on a plane to Hollywood or New York. Just, there's community theater. There, there's theater at school. Nowadays, children get together and they make movies. There's kids to get their own YouTube channel. There's stuff you can do without totally trashing your life and running off to Hollywood where your kid can make stuff and be creative and do theater and learn about acting and learn about the process. Um, and then there are people who's like, okay, if it seems to be working out, you want to like, try out audition for things okay but proceed with caution because no it's not normal and it's very 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 hard work mm. and frankly most normal people can't cover I, I think about all the time like people will they'll see kids on tv and they'll do that well i could do that or my kid could do that and it's like when i think how much goes into it think about your average kid you know your own kid or a kid you know of say nine to could you randomly hand them something and say, here, read this out loud. Cold, read this out loud. Just read it. How good would it be? Would they stop a lot? Would they have any trouble? Or would they just be able to do that? Okay. Now hand them three pages of something, a script, a book, and say, go memorize this and come up and stand up and recite it for me tomorrow from memory. Could, could your child do that? Now imagine taking your child from the house to a completely strange place several hours away to outdoors or an indoor location with 150 complete strangers, adults, and have them stand in front of those 150 strangers with lights and cameras pointed at them and say, okay, go and have them recite the three pages. Could your child do that? That's very intimidating and a frightening experience for anyone adult. And most people cannot do that. They can't because it's like ridiculous. They go, ah, they, they, they cannot do that. Certain people can. And those are the people you see on your TV. Mm. Mm. And then that's, and that's just yeah. the, acting, I, that's the acting part. And then there's agents and managers and publicity. You know, are you going to go to the telethon? Are you going to go to Toys for Talks? Will you be appearing on the red carpet? Are you going to do, would the child be doing interviews? What? Ah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And most people are not prepared for that. Most people are not prepared for that. And then most people shouldn't be doing it and can't do it and shouldn't do it and will hurt themselves. Tiny, tiny. Mm -hmm. certain. Some people have a weird personality. They're cut out to do that. Yeah. Those people are. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, I think about uh, my my ability to uh, memorize. I could memorize things I hear because I couldn't read, 
I couldn't read my grade level until I was 16. But you know, that's a whole another thing. Uh, I could have been one of these people if I had learned, taken that talent, I could speak eight languages now. <laughs> you know, if I, if, if I, you know, you, if your kid is this smart that they can do this kind of thing, have them be a, a you know, they could be a judge. They could be, they could be a brain surgeon. I mean, if they're that smart, they could do memorize something else. <laughs> let, let them be an astronaut. Don't, you know, television is not the, is not all it's cracked up to be. I mean, it, it sounds glamorous, but it's, it's really not, it's not that glamorous and the, and you don't make that much money. I mean, really you don't for how much work you do. This many people make a bunch of money. And then these people, mm-hmm. even if they weren't just, they just dead. Well, yeah. and, you know, and, and, and it's interesting. While, none, never again. And, you know, and you could have been a, a freaking, you know, you could, you could be running a hospital. You could be, uh, you could be a diplomat. You could, you could be a, a, a a, a, a lawyer. I mean, there's so many things that you could do with this brain power um, that was just wasted in my <laughs> mind. Wasted. Well, you know, I'm, I'm listening to this. I'm listening to both of you. And I, of course, I grew up in this little town south of San Francisco. And I, uh, I always loved Hollywood. And I watched the, I watched Little House. I watched I watched uh, Every Day Was the Fourth of July, and I watched all the, these shows growing, uh, growing up, uh, uh, Happy Days, whatever it was. But I'm listening to this and so glad that I had my childhood the way I had it. Um, did it, I mean, it sounds like you both uh, didn't have a full childhood then. Well, I, okay, I'll give you an example. Um, you know that dream that sometimes people say they have where they're in, they're, they're in a dream. They don't know they're in a dream. They're back in high school. They're not wearing their underwear. They don't have any, um, their homework, yeah. you know, that dream. I don't have that dream. My dream is that I'm on the set. I haven't read the script. My wardrobe is wrong. I can't find anybody that has the signs. I'm going, I'm up in a moment. My makeup's wrong. I don't know what flipping scene I'm, I haven't read the script. I don't know what I'm doing and I'm going to be fired because I don't know my lines I, and I can't find anybody to give me the freaking signs. Yeah, that's my dream. That's the dream I have. Ditto, ditto thing. It's, it's what the problem is, is that show business has over the years, and it's not really new. It's been going on probably God since like the thirties or forties when the movies right. became a big thing being a movie star or a tv star or worse a pop star has oh. become the american version of marry a handsome prince and become royalty mm. remember when fairy tales were you would be a poor peasant girl cinderella yeah. you know but, but sitting by the fire and having to mop and clean it was the the fantasy in all the fairy tales is the poor the poor orphan girl living with the evil stepmother her mother has died and they're poor and they're woodsmen and somehow snow white sleeping beauty what have you they meet a handsome prince of royalty and get married and they move to the palace and they become a queen and this was a big fantasy and you'd have to think well wow in like feudal times well that would kind of be it you'd be like well we're going to be digging potatoes here in the dirt for generations or maybe someone will meet a prince and yeah that 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 was kind of thing people have this weird it's like this is the fantasy now i will get discovered and be in show business and become a movie star or a rock star Mm. and it's almost the same mentality i'll meet a handsome prince and i i won't have to cook and clean for my evil stepmother and ugly stepsisters Mm. right yeah there is no happily ever after. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're people that worked out like kind of almost good for, you know, by career. And, but I got the speech. Okay, so I started working when I was five. My SAG card says member since 1967. So I was like five, first start working. <laughs> and, oh, it's great. It's great. So I was at a SAG meeting a couple of years ago. And yeah. everyone's getting up and saying, blah, blah, member since 19, blah, blah, and then speaking. And people get a oh, member since 1989. And everyone goes, hmm, I'm very impressed. And they'd speak. I've been so the member since 1992. And people go, ah, and they'd speak. And I got up and I didn't even think about it. I said, member since 1967. And everybody went, <gasps> <laughs> And so 
I like I forget like ninety seven. That's um. So I remember I was doing like uh, yeah, I did like a Hunt's ketchup commercial. Uh, I had an after card too because I was on juvenile jury. I was the Kitty Carlisle of the third grade. I was on a panel show. It's very clever. So I was doing all this. I worked like a fiend, and I did a movie when I was ten. So I worked a lot, really, from like six to ten. Did a bunch of stuff, and then I. Was, I didn't get work. I didn't get work. I thought the movie would blow it out. And it didn't. Well, wasn't that great a movie? I don't know if anybody saw it. So um, we, we, it didn't go anywhere. And I wasn't working. So I'm 11. And mm. my father sits me down to have a realistic talk. And he says, look, you haven't booked anything lately. And you just, you had the feature film. And we thought that would be bigger. So we need to take into account, you might not work again. This is very common that people who work a lot at six, seven, and eight don't really work at 11 and 12, 13. They sh shift, oh. they shift. And they may never work. I said, now you might work as an adult, as a totally different person, or you may never work again. This could be it completely, but you are at that, that age. Was very him. That was, that's a frank conversation yeah. to have with somebody. I mean, it's crazy because I was basically being told I was washed up and I was old and my career was over and having oh a midlife God. crisis at 11, but he was telling yeah. the truth. He was telling yes. the truth. He didn't sit there and go, hey, it's all fine. He went, well, here's what's happening. And laid it out. And I was like, oh, I don't know. okay. And he was right. Because I had certainly seen people at like 12, 13 going bang, 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 bang. And then, of course, the word teenager, duh. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you work still the limited hours till you're 18. So everybody, when they're teenager, wants to look older. But if you're 14, 15, and you look 19, you're out of work, babe. Because they're mm. going to go get somebody right. 18 yeah. or 20, because duh. So you mm -hmm. want to look, you know, pookie thing. Well, of course, I'm 11 and I get the you're out, of, you're never working again speech. And then I go out and I audition, I get oh. Little House in the Prairie. <laughs> Thank you. And that transition, I mean, you did that for 12 years or something, right? Seven years, but it was perfect because that's 12. So it was 19 when my seven year contract was up. So well into adulthood. Oh. And my character was, we were allowed, to, that was the other thing on the show, we were allowed to grow up. I mean, some shows, show, yeah. we were, I got, I grew up, I graduated school, my character, I was like, I fell in love, I got married, I had married. twins, and so I got a restaurant and twins and a hubby and all this stuff. And then the show went, so I'm not playing a kid and trying to figure out how to play an adult. Yeah. I'm already playing a married lady with a restaurant and then auditioning. So right. it's like, that's so so awesome. I, that's I stood so a awesome. chance in hell at least. And then I went and did theater. And so like, I didn't work a lot, but then I did theater and I did stand up. So I had like somewhere to go. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, that, and then and then because of the stand up, I was creating my own work, which was smart, 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 smart. And that's still what You're I wound up doing. You're but, such a good businesswoman, really. You really are. You do great. By learning by the, the hard way, the process of elimination of that. <laughs> It's that, it's that. Like running head now, first into brick wall and then going ah okay <laughs> so i have a one you, one final question for both of you very, i'm very watchful. what was that what? No, what what katie yeah i said you're very industrious you really um have your yes you you work your ass off i do you i do work your ass off I, I I do indeed. See, I did the book thing. I got I got a store online. Uh, I maybe I'm trying to do a cooking show and a cookbook. And as I said, when I in when everything hats? right the, the bonnet, when everything was canceled, I had all these stand up gigs and everything was canceled. Next thing I knew, I was doing them in my living room. I just went ahead and did everything. And the, it's like I'm doing the exact same thing except it's in the oh. living room. Okay. Oh my gosh! But I got paid. way more energy than I do. So this uh, this is the last question to both yeah. of you. Uh, what do you want the most at this moment in your life? Oh, God, to wow. like not be 60. I'm like, blah, man. Oh, you're beautiful. Don't give me that shit. Gorgeous. You look great. I have a really good ring. The ring light, the ring light, the makeup and the ring light really helps, man. Um, yeah, it's like, I, don't I, don't, I, don't, I spent so long thinking about, wow, 60. I still see, that's the thing. I still feel young so that I still like a 15 year old think 60 years old. So I'm like, no, I can't be 60. What is happening? Um, I, I guess, I mean, I, I obviously it's like the, I'm, I'm in good health. Like I said, I, I'm just going to slightly have to have my eyeglasses upgraded. Not very much. So I was just the eye doctor. So I'm, I'm in good I health and know. I look good and I have jobs and I have a husband who has a job and we have a house and I can't really complain um I'm beloved in France what um 
I guess really <laughs> seriously, if I could wish like blow out candles, make a wish, where I wish I had more energy because I do so much. And now I go, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so tired. So I wish, I wish I had more energy and stamina. Mm. Okay. Wow. Katie? I guess it's my turn. <laughs> You're up. No, I'm up. Um, well, um, I, my life is good. It's very simple. Um, I live in a quiet place. I like simple. I like small. I've learned to really just like um, keeping it simple. Um, I don't have your energy, Allison, at all. And I'm perfectly fine being out of the business. <clears throat> but I have been divorced now. Um, the, the relationship fell apart in 16, um, but I have not been, okay. I have not been, I have not had an intimate partner since 2013. And, oh, wow. um, the, you know, the relationship started to tank not long after that, you know, my ex was on location a lot and relationship fell apart and there was another human involved and good for them. Yay. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I've been divorced since, um, I think that was final in, in 18. It's now 22. And I think I would like to have a, not a marriage. Don't want to do that again. I don't want to have to like gnaw off my leg to get out of a bad relationship. I'm not doing that again. Um, but I think I would like to have a boyfriend. I think I would like to have a intimate um, uh, friendship partner person in my life who can put up with how weird I am and who has some weirdness of his own that sort of, you know, our mere weirdness does match without getting totally enmeshed with the other person. I don't want to make some guy my God, because okay. that's like something I do. Uh, I would like to have a healthy relationship. That's what I would like, is to have a healthy primary relationship. Nice. Excellent idea. I like that. Hmm. Well, Allison, thank you so much for coming on this surprise. I love surprises. It's going to be fun, but that's not how much fun. Hey, do you swim with those manatees like all the time? Or are they like what, in front of your house or yeah. something? Or do you just? <laughs> I don't live on the St. John's. Actually, that was the Silver River. But I do go kayaking all the time. Okay. Um, my sister lives on the lake. Um, I don't live that far from her. We have three kayaks. Uh, she and her wife and me, we go kayak around the lake it is about um i want to say it's about a mile around the lake so it, it you know we go on a hike uh usually about well a couple times a month I go oh next kayaking. she's of course she'll be happy um, birthday from a boat and she's like oh the manatees it's like right here yeah. hi manatee. and it's like the manatees wishing me oh. happy birthday and it's like that's funny i'd yes, love to see that yes. was, i'm so i'm so glad you like that I was, just, I, did. I was trying to think of something creative. I know. I, think I'll I'll do Alice the, I, I have French friends who were skiing in like the Alps going, oh, it's my anniversary from the top of a mountain. And I was oh, like, okay, fun. that's impressive. <laughs> well, once we, once that's this, really this uh, pandemic calms down a bit, let's all have dinner together. Yes. 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 I have a guest room. I have a space that has a guest room. So you have Party. to squeeze into one bed if you were, but it would be big enough for you and Bob if you'd like to come down and hang with there us down here. Okay. Okay. That could be a thing. Party at Katie's. That could be. What was that? Party at Katie's. Yes. Woohoo. After yeah. the pandemic is over, of course. <laughs> After the pandemic's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love love bringing people together. So again, thank you, Allison. This was so much fun. Thank you, thank you. I love it. And thank we'll... you. Oh, thank you for doing this, David. This is a great surprise. Oh, my pleasure. My my joy. <laughs> All righty, I'll, I'll we'll talk soon. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs> See you. Say, kiss the manatees for me. Bye. It's <laughs> love for me. <laughs> Uh, well, there you wow. go. That was awesome.
I when I when you were coming, I I had to do something like that. No, the segue was perfect. Thank you. I practiced. That was great. I'm like, I'm like showing the picture back here. Oh, that was awesome. Well, yeah. When you said that, I went, okay. I got a letter in right now. 